Welcome to the Taste Media Group Intelligence Series. We've been off for a couple of weeks, but we're back here today with civil rights and sports and entertainment attorney, Andrew M. Stroth. Andrew, thanks a lot for your time here Thank today. You. Thank you for having me here. And we're on Facebook Live, so we appreciate everybody tuning in. And just getting started off, Andrew, that's a pretty big job description that you have. There's a lot of duality in that. Mm -hmm. Can you kind of take us through your current occupation, kind of what you do on a day-to-day -day basis, given your duties on the civil rights and also the entertainment and sports side? Sure, sure. About four years ago, I started a civil rights law firm called Action Injury Law Group. It's exclusively dedicated to representing victims of unjustified and unconstitutional police shootings and excessive force. And so we represent 40 families across the country whose sons or daughters have been shot, killed, or injured by police. Prior to that, I spent 20 years representing NFL and NFL athletes, professional athletes, as well as television personalities across the country. And so uh, talking about uh, the civil rights side of things, and giving your experience with media. Yes. When you're out there and, and it's a high profile case, you sometimes become the face of the defense as the, as the lawyer. Yes. Can you kind of talk about how important it is that you represent the case to the public and the kind of approach yes. you take that, given that a, a two minute sound bite can kind of sway a case sometimes in the sure. court of public opinion? Well, it's really important. A lot of the mothers I represent, they've never been in a legal situation. This has been the biggest tragedy that they've ever experienced. And they need someone who knows the law and knows the facts to fight on their behalf. You know, in many of these situations, the narrative given by the police or by the authorities is not consistent with the truth. If the Laquan McDonald video hadn't gone public, people wouldn't have believed that happened. So I'm an advocate fighting for justice on behalf of, of families, and especially in underserved black and brown communities. And just for a point of reference, you didn't have anything to do with the Laquan McDonald case, correct? No, I wasn't okay. a lawyer on so the just Laquan so, McDonald case. Yeah, but, but to your point, I mean, the fact that there is video evidence out there these yes. days, it definitely changes the way uh, the public can perceive uh, what, what went on. And yes. uh, so in, in this day-to-day uh, -day role then, um, can I talk about though, your, when you get in front of the cameras and you mm -hmm. have to, to talk about a case to the media, what's your approach to that just in terms of keeping the, the dialogue and the communication straight from the family sure. side to make sure that it's not just a one-sided narrative well, that's first in the of public? All, first of all, when we get a case, we do an investigation. We want to get the truth. We want to talk to the witnesses. We also leverage the federal lawsuit to put our narrative out into the public space. But when we're doing press conferences, we want to make sure we're advocates of the family and speaking about the facts of what really happened. And so that's really important to us. Part of our strategy handling these cases is working effectively with the media, especially within the first few days of a, of a tragic incident. Yeah, exactly. So we're watch, you're watching here on Facebook Live. We, we, are, we are with Andrew M. Stroth. And uh, we just spoke about the uh, civil rights part of your day to day. And something a little bit lighter, obviously, is sure. dealing with the sports and entertainment yes. world. And kind of give us a rundown of your experience for that. You said you did it for uh, almost 20 years and still, yes. still doing it in some capacity. Yeah, I mean, I was fortunate. I mean, I, from Chris Zorch on the Chicago Bears to Lovey Smith to Brandon Marshall. Um, at one point, I represented Donovan McNabb and Michael Vick, the two black quarterbacks on the Philadelphia Eagles. And that was an amazing experience, as well as I represented Dwayne Wade from 2005 to 2008. And Dwayne won his first championship in 2006 with Shaquille O'Neal. And as a result of representing him, we negotiated all of his off the court uh, business deals. And it was groundbreaking. I mean, other than my years watching Michael Jordan play ball, when Dwayne Wade won that championship in 2006, it was one of the biggest moments of, of clearly Dwayne's career, but also my career as, as his sports marketing executive. Yeah, and, and that was, I mean, I remember that run. I was still, I think, right out of Cal. I mean, he had an incredible run. That, yes. that series against yes. the Pistons, I think it was, yes. where he literally beat the Pistons by yes. himself in that third or fourth quarter. Yes. And when um, he won the championship, it was against Dallas in Dallas right. in game six, and it was incredible. Yeah. And I remember telling Dwayne, you may be tired, but we, we got, this is your moment in time. This is your 15 minutes. And so you mentioned you, you uh, working with NFL players yes. and NBA players. The mindset of NFL player has to be a lot different when you're dealing with them versus an NBA player where there's guaranteed yes. contracts. Yes. This day and age with the with the, the, the ESPN deal, I mean, the money is just way bigger in the NBA. Yes, huge. Um, but how did you kind of approach that from an NFL standpoint and an NBA standpoint? Because it's not the same thing. No, it's very different. I mean, also the NBA is much more of a global sport. When I represented Dwayne Wade, you know, there's 300 million basketball fans in China. So you're talking about a sport that's global. You're talking about a sport that has guaranteed contracts. You're talking about players that make millions off the court. You know, the NFL is different. The lifespan of an NFL player is much shorter. It's a much more dangerous sport, and those contracts aren't guaranteed. 
you know, when I represented Dwayne, I mean Donovan McNabb, I also represented Mama McNabb, who was the favorite mother in sports. So I basically, soup. So, yeah, she was a Kimmel <laughs> Soup lady. Yeah. So I spent a lot of time uh, working with Donovan, introducing him to the business community, getting him endorsement deals, and also getting his mom uh, marketing and business opportunities. And just speaking to that, when these opportunities arise, you know, athletes have so many ways they can leverage their, their brand, yes. their name, their, their ability to draw attention. I mean, do you, how do you approach that when equity is on the table versus straight cash? Yeah, so I'm a big believer in equity. I'm a big believer in strategic partnerships. When I had Donovan McNabb, we did a deal with Vitamin Water, and people didn't really know Vitamin Water. And Donovan had an opportunity to be with Gatorade or to be with Vitamin Water. Well, after talking to Donovan and explaining the options, we decided to do a cash plus stock deal with vitamin water versus a straight cash deal with Gatorade. Donovan didn't really want to do the deal, but 18 months later, vitamin water was acquired by Coca-Cola for $4.2 billion, and Donovan received a far bigger payout, and I think he was pleased with that decision. So, and even with Dwayne, Wade, we looked for equity-oriented relationships and partnerships. You know, when you're a pro athlete or a TV personality like Cheryl Scott in Chicago, you have certain celebrity value that you can translate into other opportunities. Yeah, exactly. And uh, that, that, I mean, what, was that the same time 50 Cent? I mean, is that yeah, story, was, is that yes, story yes, true? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that. did they just have like, a, I, I didn't know Don McNabb was a vitamin yes. water guy, but like, did they just have a, a, a plethora of athletes who kind of yes. got in on that? 50 Cent was the significant shareholder and they got a bunch of other athletes to also strike smaller equity deals. And, and, and as 50 said, he made a lot of money. He may not made uh, the money they said, but he still made m m tens of millions of dollars. Yeah, I saw his house on a million yes. dollar listing. <laughs> Unfortunately, he can't sell the house, but he's got at least some cash got in the it. bank that he can totally. ride off of. Totally. Um, so yeah, so uh, just, you, you talk about uh, Don McNabb's mother and, and the circle of influence around athletes. Yes. And, and athletes are kind of in a unique situation because where an entertainer might have a manager and an agent, mm -hmm. uh, athletes sometimes don't have that go-between. Maybe mm -hmm. they have an agency that represents them, yes. but they don't always have uh, top billing in the agency. Yes. How do you kind of manage your expectations? Because it can be a lot of, obviously, you know, if you're on top, it's great, but you know, the, there's the day where you stop playing. Yeah, and, and, and not, not every player is LeBron James, not every player is Michael Jordan. Exactly. My advice when I was representing Dwayne and Donovan and others is you need to maximize this moment in time and you need to have a long-term plan. Because when the lights are off and you're not playing in front of 100,000 people or 60,000 people, it's tough. So I spent a lot of time working with the athletes on post-career while they were in their career. And I spent a lot of time introducing these guys to business executives, community leaders, and others so that their equity would, uh, would transform just playing pro sports. And just transitioning then into the uh, local news scene where, yes. you, where you have these you know, major markets, uh, people that are on TV every single day, they yes. have uh, recognition. Kind of describe about how that world even differs from the sports world when you're negotiating contracts. Because I mean, at the end of the day, news organizations are still a lot stricter in terms of what they can do. Yeah, that's right. I mean, Cheryl Scott is a, is a very talented young lady. I mean, I think she should become the most well-known weather personality in, in, in the world, actually. Um, but as a news personality, you can't do endorsements and you can't do business deals because of your role as a news personality. So there's a lot of restrictions. Versus in sports, you can do a lot more. You can't do alcohol, you can't do cigarettes, you can't do things like that, but there's a lot more flexibility. But in a market like Chicago, those news personalities are are big celebrities in these towns. And how do you see that, that the role, just how you would advise uh, news personalities moving forward? I, I went to University of Missouri, Columbia, mm -hmm. so there's probably a lot of journalism majors that are gonna be watching this who went into the field. Unfortunately, a lot of people have dropped out. Mm -hmm. I, I mentioned that before here. I mean, the, just the nature of the business is, yes. is, is what it is, but just for those that have been able to stick with it, move up to a top market, how do you kind of advise them moving yeah. forward given that, that news you know, the, the internet's kind of uh, yes. circumvented the 10 o'clock news. The media environment has completely changed. It's all about digital. And I tell young people to become good at those skills, good at digital, good at Facebook, good at producing their own content. Because the days of news personalities getting those big salaries is, is, is gone. And the environment continues to change. Um, but I still think there's an opportunity because people want content. Yeah, very, very interesting, Andrew. And uh, we appreciate your time here on the Taste Media Group Intelligence Series. We don't have a lot of time. We're live here. I mean, you're a busy guy. We, we have certain windows we've got to fill here. Sure, I understand. <laughs> um, any other advice that you would say just either on the, the legal side or the so, sports and entertainment side? Just any parting words of wisdom here? Well, I just think you want to pursue your, your purpose and your path, your passion, your passion and your purpose. When you can find an intersection be, between what you want to do and what you're good at with a way to make money and support your lifestyle and your family, that's a win. I would also recommend... Um, there's a book by Gary Keller called The One Thing.
the one thing by Gary Keller, all it talks about focus and becoming really good at one thing. So if it's a journalist or if it's a producer or if it's an athlete, figuring out what you're good at and really focusing on that and developing that. And I also think you want to think about what's possible. No one defines your present or your future. So think about, I've always thought about what's possible, not what's impossible. And I think you want to design your life in this day and this age. You can work from anywhere. You just need to think about your value proposition. And, and I want to, you know, ultimately become a philanthropist and help folks. And I just think if you think about your purpose and what gifts God has given you, um, you can make things happen. And, and uh, we should end on the note that when we met through Cheryl Scott, uh, we realized we both went to Lions Township High School. That's right. So, That's right. so everything That's comes, right. comes That's full right. circle. That's right. um, so shout out LaGrange, shout out LT. Uh, thanks everybody for watching here on Facebook Live, this episode of the Taste Media Group Intelligence Series. And I promise next week, we will have another interview. I know we've been off for a couple of weeks, but thanks for tuning in, and we will be back next week. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you.